uh, although uh, today I will uh, explain the background later, but I'd like to say the conclusion part that uh, there is no big change uh, actually in the EV battery, EV and battery industry in Japan after the COVID. And before that, uh, especially people in uh, Europe, uh, German people, uh, do not know about us. So uh, let me uh, introduce uh, Yano Research Institute and myself briefly. So uh, Yano Research Institute is a, a conventional marketing, market research and consulting firm in Japan. And uh, we have founded uh, in 1958. So it's a uh, 62nd year since its foundation. And uh, we have been conducting a lot of research uh, in a wide range of industries, uh, such as ICT, car, industrial technologies, and food, pharmaceutical, clothes, and yeah, etc. Et et so, and I, I'm, I belong to a mobility technology unit, and also I have joined this company uh, 2000 August. And uh, almost more than 10 years, I have been doing uh, market research in uh, battery and also EV segment. And also I have uh, done, uh, maybe uh, made a presentation twice uh, in the e 360 conference before. So now, I'd like to move on to the uh, main subject, but at first, I also need to mention the effect of Corona to whole uh, industry. So first of all, as you all know, the overall economy uh, is declining. So I believe that our behavior is changing and we will never return as before. Uh, V-shaped recovery is difficult and we expect that uh, it will take uh, several years to return to the economic level of 2019, for example. So therefore, I think that various economic measures will be taken in each country, but in that case, it's possible that two directions or both will occur at the same time. So one is the direction in which measures will be taken uh, centering on industries that are in line with the trends of ESG and SDGs, which are also trends of investment and management in recent years. That is, economic measures uh, will be taken in at, on eco-friendly industries such as EV and renewable energy. So, if people's consciousness changes and even if it is a little inconvenient or expensive, if people would feel safe and secure and prefer to a life that is friendly to humans and the environment, isn't the main economic measure taken on EV and renewable energy that stimulates uh, battery demand. So from the perspective of the battery industry and eco-friendly industries, I think there is a possibility that we can expect a V-shaped recovery in demand in this scenario. However, in this case, in the long term, if we are conscious uh, of the environment, we will start to shift to sharing from the world that consume things. So the economic scale as a service will expand, so but the economy is shrinking as hardware. Then this scenario may be bad for the manufacturing industry. The other is when economic measures are taken to benefit a wide range of people and industries. Corona's economic downturn is becoming more structural than temporary. So a wide range of economic activities are affected. People's willingness to buy and consume behavior will not recover and economy may continue to stagnate. In that case, there is a possibility that funds will be postponed to eco-friendly industries because economic measures will be implemented for a wide range that is existing industries. So for example, the automobile industry, which has a wide range of industries, may want to concentrate its resource on ICE with high profit margin. As a result, I think that policies and services for EV will, will have to be postponed. From the perspective of the battery industry, I think that slower growth and longer term investment can help level investment costs and make business plans easier 
and the industry as a whole is not bad in the medium to long term. So there are two uh, post-corona scenarios that I consider, but of course it is possible that these measures will be taken by both. In that case, a short-term economic recovery is also expected, but in that case, it remains doubtful whether sufficient funds will be distributed to each industry and whether it will be uh, possible to support in the medium to long term. I think that it may not be a sustainable policy from a financial perspective. However, in Germany, it seems that it has been announced that economic measures will be applied only to EV in uh, automobiles. In the first quarter alone, sales of ICE in Germany described by 1 million units, uh, decreased by 1 million units year on year. So I personally thought that there is a high possibility that uh, economic measures will be applied to a wide range of existing industries. However, it seems that uh, spread to EV is strongly encouraged in Germany. In Germany. So still, in my personal opinion, the economy as a whole is something severely. And even if there are EV subsidies, EV subsidies doesn't make sense if you cannot afford to buy a car. So the management of automobile companies also becomes uncertain. So I wonder if they can continue to invest management resources in EVs in the long term. So by the way, it seems that demand for used cars is increasing in China. Now, I'd like to return to today's uh, main topic, what is Japanese EV and the battery market situation after the corona, yeah, COVID-19. Uh, and first of all, I think that uh, European and American, not maybe not American recently here today, but may not be so familiar with the EV and battery industry in Japan. So I'd like to briefly introduce those industry structures in Japan, mainly the car, battery, and uh, material manufacturers. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about uh, Japanese automobile manufacturers, but I think many of you are familiar with automobile manufacturers, and Toyota and Nissan are major, and in addition, Mazda, Subaru, and Mitsubishi Motors are available. Suzu Hat is a light vehicle. Uh, it is called the K-Car in Japan, and Isuzu and Hino are trucks. So Daihat is a sub subsidiary of Toyota. Among these, Nissan is uh, most active in EV and hybrid uh, is the main theme for Toyota and Honda. So, Mitsubishi Motors Outlanders is famous in uh, KGV. Next, uh, I'd like to introduce a Japanese cell and material industry infrastructure, but uh, I'd like you to take a look at this later because of time constraints. Uh, there are still many cell manufacturers, but their scale is small and their presence in the world market is decreasing. And as to ESS, uh, has a new player such as Delcera and Sanyo Chemicals. Also, uh, the material industry has been largely reconstructed. There are still some major companies for each material and it is characterized by companies with a relatively large size. Now, back to the story. And Japanese car sales market here is approximately 5 million combining general passenger cars and light car. Of these, there are 20,000 EVs and 20,000 EVs and 1.5 million hybrids. And the ratio of XEV is about uh, around 30% to the whole market. However, if we just look at EV and PHEV, it is less than 1% to the total. And Japan can be said to be falling behind in the EV market. It will take a long time to start talking about the background, but in summary, uh, the background behind the rise of the EV market in the world market is policy and subsidies. So uh, even in Japan, uh, there are some subsidies and tax benefits for EVs and PHEVs, but they are not so ample and the initial price remains high. So there are various other issues such as charging infrastructure, but it seems that Japan does not have a policy to drive EVs strongly like China and Europe. Uh, in Japan, 
there is a policy for next generation vehicles strategy in Japan as of 2030. But as a group goal by 2030, we will try to make the proportion of uh, electrically driven vehicles uh, to uh, 50 to 70 percent. Looking at the breakdown, hybrid is 30 to 40, and EV and PHEV is 20 to 30, and PSA is 3 percent, and clean diesel is 5 to 10 percent. So although it seems to be uh, quite ambitious only by looking at numbers, but in reality, hybrid is most, and even if it cannot be achieved by the target, the fine is only just 1 million yen or less, so which is almost nothing for a car company. So according to the new fuel economy regulation proposal concerning new car sales compiled by the government in early June 2019, the average fuel consumption up to fiscal year 2018 will be set to uh, uh, 25.4 kilometers per liter of gasoline. And although the new regulation has aimed to improve fuel efficiency, I think that the effectiveness is very low. So what will happen in Japan's EV and battery industry after Kora? As for par my personal opinion, as I mentioned at the beginning, I didn't think there will be any significant changes after that. The reason for this is that the Japanese OEMs are not aggressive in EVs and have not made uh, major investments in EVs and these batteries. Uh, first, Japan car and battery industry are skeptical of the EV market. There are some backgrounds, but it is because the two major automobile manufacturers, Toyota and Honda, are not aggressive in EV. The perception is that uh, EV, EVs are not products that are sufficiently competitive compared to existing ICEs. That is, they believe EV cannot be sold. In fact, they rarely sell EVs in Japan, and they are only aiming at the minimum sales in China and Europe in compliance with regulations. So as I talked, the Japanese domestic market is mainly hybrid, and there are no, not so many subsidies for EV and PHEVs. As a policy, there is a goal setting of next generation vehicles as of uh, 2030, but it does not reach the level of driving the EV market as much as, as China and Europe. For this reason, battery and material manufacturers do not make much upfront investment and are not aggressive about uh, products for EVs and just demand-based business. And as to the expansion into overseas plant, Japanese companies are not uh, are just on demand. So they secure orders first, then establish overseas plants. So many people outside of Japan ask me why Japanese companies are not expanding overseas or why they are not investing EVs. But the reason why they do not is that they do not have high expectation for the EV market. Then uh, I'd like to look more concretely at the Japanese cell ma manufacturers and material manufacturers. So Panasonic is the only Japanese manufacturer that has a strong presence in automotive batteries market. The company has production base, bases not only in Japan, but also in the United States and also in China. The company's main business is a cylindrical cell for Tesla and their large prismatic cell business is not very active. Other than that, GS USA, Toshiba, and Vico Energy Japan are listed, but GS USA and Vico Energy Japan are mainly focusing on hybrid battery, and Toshiba has experience in EV, but rather commercial vehicles and special vehicles are the main. Now, I'm paying attention to uh, Prime Planet Energy and Solutions. Uh, this is a joint venture between Panasonic and Toyota. This joint venture company is 51% uh, stake in Toyota and 49% in Panasonic, and mainly handles large format prismatic cells. However, because Toyota sees EV growth in the medium to long term in terms of demand, so I do not see a production capacity or a sequence expanding rapidly in the short term. So Panasonic's large prismatic cells also have, the, have a base in Dalian, China, so it may be possible to meet global demand based on uh, existing to these uh, two bases. 
So as you can see, there is no cell manufacturers in Japan that are making large scale investment in EVs and PGBs with so-called large format cells. Note that uh, AESC, which has a proven experience to record in large uh, laminated cells, became Envision AESC, a Chinese company now. So at present, the business type is changing drastically such as aggressively making large-scale investment in China and promoting the production of high nickel batteries. On the other hand, I think that in uh, Japan, NCMs are mainly one-third and uh, five to three. So there are a few examples of adopting 62 in Japan. So next, I'd like to talk about uh, material manufacturers. Japanese material manufacturers like cell makers are not so aggressive in looking at the EV market. So many of their main customers are Japanese companies and they do not make large scale upfront investment. And looking at uh, Japanese material manufacturers, there are many companies with uh, relatively large companies. Also, there are many medium sized companies that are relatively large in size. So in Japan, there are more than twice as many battery material manufacturers as there are now. However, in the battery market, as major players have moved from Japan to South Korea and China, which was seen also in LCDs and semiconductors industry before, the shipment volume has declined and it has, less, uh, it has been virtually withdrawn. As a result, of course, although there are companies with technical capabilities, companies with financial strength remain in the market. About several companies are showing their presence in the world market for each material. So looking at press announcement of these major Japanese material manufacturers, it seems that they are aggressive in the even market because they have made a considerable investment and have large scale production capacity. But looking at the investment attitude, which was the result of uh, accumulating orders and cannot be said to be an active up active upfront, upfront investment. I also uh, regularly exchange opinions with Japanese material manufacturers. In the majority of their opinion, although EV demand is rising in China and Europe, it is a market created by policy, so not user needs. So if the policy is in the EV market is likely to be sluggish like the current Chinese market. So it is by no means a medium to long term sustainable market. So against uh, this background, even if the industrial structure of EV and battery would change due to Corona globally, I believe that there is no significant change in Japanese market. So uh, finally, in summary, I'd like to talk about what will happen to Japan's EV and battery industries if changes occur in the global market after Corona. I'd like to talk about uh, this in the case where people's consciousness changed after Corona and it became a more eco-friendly world. First of all, EV. But again, Toyota and Honda haven't been focusing on EV, so I think there will be a delay in this market. At present, Toyota and Honda are investing uh, to meet demand and they plan to sell only the minimum number of vehicles that meet the regulation in China and Europe where regulations are strict. So we cannot expect a large demand expansion. Although Nissan is focusing on EVs, but the number of new car models has changed a little over the last few years and the overall vehicle sales have fallen. So in the fiscal 2019, a fiscal year 2019, they were in the red of uh, 671.2 billion yen and they need to reform their business structure. Although they have not retired from focusing on EVs, Leaf says were uh, 16,000 units in uh, 2017 and uh, 20, around 25,000 units in uh, 2018. But in uh, 2019, uh, there are only uh, there are on a downward trend with uh, 19,000 units, and by 2020, the numbers up to May are still below the previous year's level, so they expect a difficult uh, situation. So against this background, Japan's EV presence in the global market is expected to decline. 
On the other hand, they are aggressively promoting uh, electrification, including hybrids. So I believe that uh, the presence of Japanese manufacturers in the hybrid market will continue to grow. And uh, let's look at the sale market. I think Japanese companies will continue to develop their uh, business on, on a demand base as before. So since the focus on large scale, a large capacity, large size sales, which is being focused by South Korean and Chinese cell manufacturers is relatively low. If the EV passenger car market expands rapidly, the presence of Japanese cell makers in the global market will gradually decrease. So I think they have characteristics in the niche market such as hybrid and other output types, commercial vehicles and special vehicles. On the other hand, they do not uh, expect to suffer a significant finance loss if EV demand would be less than expected because the fact that they are investing to meet demand and doing business with relatively high unit price. I think uh, everyone knows better about the Tesla Panasonic Alliance and it is a natural thing, but if Tesla is produced and sold according to plan, it will be a business generating a good profit. Uh, regarding uh, material manufacturers, uh, companies that have received orders from major EV projects of South Korea and China are expected to grow steadily. I don't think there is a financial problem with these companies as they are investment that meet demand rather than upfront investment. On the other hand, if demand does not grow as expected, the operating status of ex uh, equipment may worsen, but company as a whole will not be fluctuated. So I don't think that the uh, company will go bankrupt and the supply system will become uneasy. Uh, there are many Japanese material manufacturers doing business steadily for small consumers uh, application. So in fact, there are many companies that do not focus on in vehicle use and make profits for small consumers applications. Uh, on the other hand, looking at IP, many companies have basic material patents. And if the EV market expands in Europe and the United States in the future, there are possibility that the presence of Japanese companies that have uh, IP in LIB and the material used there will increase. So this is because, as you all know, Western OEM plays importance on the IP. So looking at this, I think you can see that Japanese OEM and sale makers are developing their characteristic in the niche market and the material manufacturers are increasing their presence uh, by increasing orders from overseas sale makers in global market after Corona. So uh, this is the end of my talk, but I think it would, be, uh, it would have been more interesting uh, if I could talk that the situation in Japan would change dramatically after Corona. But in terms of EV and uh, battery industry in Japan, Japanese companies have less focused on those markets comparing to other countries. So since Japan itself does not yet see a major change in energy policy with this corona, so my opinion is that big changes will not occur uh, after corona. So uh, today was limited time, so, but thank you very much for your attention.